<sighs> hey guys, how you doing? So while dressing up, I just remembered this video idea and I was like, I'm coming to film it, okay? No fancy setup, no nothing. I'm just gonna sit down. I'm talking about the things that I, you know, haven't been buying for a while or that I'm no longer going to be buying moving forward and, you know, things that basically are kind of useless in my life right now, okay? So I'm just saying this about myself, my family, my household, things that really do not work for us and things that I have decided to stop purchasing, okay? It doesn't mean that it's not going to work for you or your family or your children or yourself. I'm talking about me right now, okay? And I really want to find my tribe. I really want to find people that can relate to these things because somebody somebody out there must relate, okay? Yeah, so why am I so restless? Anyway, the first one is perfumes, you guys. I've never been a perfume buyer and moving forward, I don't think I'm ever going to be a perfume buyer. Most of my perfumes were gifted to me by friends, by my husband. In fact, most of them are by my husband, to be honest. So I usually don't see the need or have the urge to get new perfumes or try out new perfumes. I really don't care to, <laughs> to a very large extent. I don't care. Personally, what I usually spend my money on is body mist, body sprays, because they're a little bit milder than perfumes most times, if you choose it right. They're a little bit milder than perfumes and and I use those ones daily um, but for perfumes which I use when I'm going out mostly and the expensive stuff is usually from my husband so I don't think I'm ever going to buy perfumes maybe if he stops buying or something <laughs> I might be forced to buy one day but I personally don't have the urge to try out new perfumes and it doesn't freak me when I see people with a large collection of perfumes I'm like what are you using all this for like can you spray all these in the next five years some people's collection like a whole someone like Jackie Aina she has a whole in fact, supermarkets of perfumes and I'm like, how does that even work? Yeah, moving on. So the second thing that I'm not going to be buying anymore is wristwatches. Again, I never used to buy wristwatches. My husband was the one that used to buy wristwatches for me. But I don't know that it's my body or a bit my blood. My husband is always teasing me about it. He always says that my blood used to spoil. <laughs> used to spoil wristwatches. I don't know what it is. The battery will always stop. That if I get the normal wristwatches that had that use well, I think they all use batteries, but I'm talking about the normal regular wristwatches. The batteries the batteries will always stop. I have a lot of beautiful wristwatches that their battery stops. We change battery, the batteries will stop. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's something that has to do with my the chemicals my body is excreting. I don't know, <laughs> but somehow my body just spoils wristwatches. And then for smart wristwatches, I always forget to charge them. And even when I remember to charge them, I don't wear them out all the time. Even when I remember I wear it. And because I don't sleep with wristwatches, the reason why I bought a smartwatch at, at first was to monitor my heart rate, my sleeping pattern, all those things. But I hate wearing anything to sleep, even stud earrings. I'm not even wearing earrings now. Even stud earrings, I don't wear earrings, anything to sleep. So, what's the point? <laughs> the next one is kitchen gadgets, especially all those special kitchen gadgets air fryer, this one cutter, that one pillar, this one processor, the, the, the oven this, thermometer that. I don't go use them. I know myself. I'm not going to use it, okay? The ones that I cannot do without, a good blender and a good food processor, I'm always going to have that. Every other thing, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't see the need. I don't see the feel. The, I don't have the urge. Um, aside from normal things like, okay, juicer, um, grater, aside those normal, normal things, I'm talking about all this state of the art, you know, brand new or whatever, <laughs> contemporary or current or what they call it now, latest gadgets when it comes to kitchen, this, I really don't, okay, I'm always going to have a mixer as well, like a very good mixer, but every other thing, all these microwaves, I don't have a microwave right now, I stopped using mine last year, after the thing sports, even before I sport anyway, we hardly use it, I barely use the microwave, and now that I don't even have anyone, I keep asking myself, what was I using microwave for then? Because I've, since I stopped using microwave, I've never sat down to say, hey, I wish I had a microwave so that I can warm this food. So how it works in my house is I have a deep freezer and I have a standing fridge, okay? If I have two, two, two standalone fridges or whatever, I have a standing fridge. So any food item that maybe I cook today and I'm sure I want to eat it tomorrow, I put it in my fridge, Especially things like rice. I don't like rice entering the freezer. The texture changes. Um, so, th so things like rice, maybe small soup, small stew, just a little quantity of stuff that I know I want to eat the next day or I'm going to eat the next day. I put those ones in the fridge. But anytime I have extras or you know large quantity of food, anytime I meal prep and stuff like that, I put those ones in the freezer. And then whenever I need them, I bring them out the night before and put them in the fridge. But the thing is that these days my fridge is so 
code because we have um, inverter is is hooked to the inverter and it is on two four seven. So because my fridge is so cold, sometimes when I put things when I move things from the freezer and put in the fridge, they don't defrost. So what I do is that the morning of like if I'm supposed to eat that food for lunch or whatever, I bring it out and just keep it on the table on the kitchen counter and allow it to defrost. So by afternoon by evening, it should have defrosted enough for me to warm it either in my oven or on my gas stop with a pot and all of that. So. Yeah, that's how it works for me. Um, I, I don't see the need of a microwave and, I, and I'll be asking myself why did I have a microwave before? It was just it's just one of those things that I felt like I needed but right now I just don't believe that I need it. Yeah, I have an air fryer but <laughs> to be honest, I've never really brought it out. <laughs> My sister is the one that gave me. I've never brought it out and when she told me she was giving me her air fryer, I was so excited. I was imagining all the recipes I'm going to be cooking there. I have no, I've never brought it out. Like it's still in the pack. It's one of those things I'm going to bring out one day and try one or two uh, and try one or two things. But for me, because it's also Zaps power and we are hooked to the prepared meter, I just gonna use my oven and roast it in and just be going. Okay. So the next one is toys. So I'm not going to completely stop buying toys, but I'm going to drastically remove, reduce the amount of toys I buy for my kids. Okay, so. Because I have kids, I have three kids that I love so much. Everybody knows I love my kids. So anytime I go out, I get to buy something for them. On their birthdays, I buy I buy toys for them. I buy expensive toys. In fact, at some point, my mother was accusing me that I buy toys for my kids that I personally would like. Like I was buying toys for them based on how based on my own wishes, like toys I wish I had as a kid, that's what I buy for my kids, or toys I wish I, I have, I'm, I'm buying them for my kids. Anyway, and then I used to argue with him that no, since I can afford it, I want to give my kids the best, this and that and that. But I realized that after buying these things, I'll be angry because my kids will not use it the way I envisioned that they should use them. So he's right. I'm basically buying them for myself, you know. My kids, you buy dolls for them. The dolls help with good one leg here. They'll use pencil and, no, what is the one pencil? They'll use marker and pen and write all over the door they will remove the door dress the doll, all the all their doors are naked i bought kitchen for them they have all types of you know toy kitchens big ones small one you know? they misplace all the parts a lot of broken toys a lot of misplaced parts i bought lego for these kids like expensive legos i bought for them so many parts are missing in fact sophia's lego now is the, the <laughs> it's just the pocket that it came in that is still there her legos i see legos outside our gates near the dustbin inside my farm i used to see sophia's legos there in fact some of in fact anyway let me not even just get upset so i now had to slowly come to the conclusion that first of all i was spending too much on buying toys for my kids and then i was buying toys too often so right now i have drastically reduced the amount of toys i buy for my kids and i no longer throw away broken toys or sports toys or defaced toys or whatever i don't throw any toys away okay any toy use them like that because to be honest, I've watched them, even their sports toys are functional to them, okay? <laughs> I was just saying some of that, I think Nella was just saying that. You know how you go out and see, maybe you see balls, or you see this puzzle, or you see something nice and you buy for your kids, and bring them home. My kids will turn into food, like they'll turn into their kitchen food, okay? So all those puzzle pieces, they'll dismantle it and put it inside pot and be using spoon and be turning it like they're cooking. You know, they'll be feeding it to their dolls, they'll turn it into jewelry, they'll... They just use it for, for a different purpose entirely, okay? So, ever since I figured out, I was just like, you know what? They should keep playing with their toys. Broken, spoiled, missing pieces, they still play with them. So, why am I stressing myself about sorting out their toys and removing the spoiled ones, getting them new, this, new, that? Eh, eh. They should just play with what they have. My other side should go and look for where they sell spoiled toys, old school toys, as in broken toys, or wherever they spoil, they, wherever they sell fairly used toys, I should go and buy toys for my children from there, but I will not do that. But the ones that they have, they should just enjoy it with it. The next one, workout clothes. <laughs> First of all, I don't even work out. I don't know why I always deceive myself. I always deceive myself. I always deceive myself that, you know what, I'm going to be working out and I want to look pink while I'm working out, okay? I don't, I don't want to wear the same things. Even when I work out, I don't... I, I, I was going to the gym at some point, but after a month or a month plus, I stopped going to the gym entirely because... To be honest, I, I just do not have the energy for it. I, I, I'm not a workout person, okay? That, I've figured that out now. And I've made peace with it that I'm not really a workout person. And then even when I want to work out, I don't need all those fancy items. See, let me just tell you the items that I'll buy for working out, okay? That I, I now buy. Well, I just bought recently, and that's it. 
You see a good workout bra, I don't care how much it is, okay? 100,000, I go buy them. 5 million naira, I go buy them. I never reach so I think that's why I bought like 25k, 25k or so. Yeah. But any amount, as long as I know it's a very good one, very strong, very firm, keep the girls in place, I can jump up and jump down and, you know, my boobs will not be slapping my face, that kind of thing. I'm good, right? So if I get a good workout bra, if I, and okay, and workout shoes as well, right? So I bought workout shoes recently as well, not so recently, but beginning of this year. So aside good workout shoes and a good workout bra, every other thing, you can freestyle it, you can remix it. I wear my biker shorts to work out. And now because I work out at home, I just wear my bra, my biker shorts because my kids are around though, you know that I wear only pants, okay? So I just wear my bra, my biker shorts and my shoes and that's it, I get my workout done. If I'm in my room, if I'm working out in my room, like if I want to just skip or do some lunges or whatever in my room, I just wear the bra and pants. Finish! I walk out in my room and look at the shoes and you know socks and all that. I walk out in my room, so all those fancy leggings that I bought, sometimes instead of getting into the leggings used to tire me. You know how workout leggings are, they are very firm, they are very stiff, you know. Wearing them is not that easy, especially when you want one that will really suck everything in and, and hold you well. Wearing them is not easy, so at some point, self, I, I, I stopped buying uh, workout t-shirts. I just wear any t-shirt, I wear my husband's t-shirt, I wear my own t-shirt, I wear old t-shirts. I stopped wearing, buying workout tops, you know. So from workout tops, I'm no longer buying workout tops, workout leggings, all those fancy bras. No, I just buy a very good firm, thick hand mama bra, like Coste. <laughs> The ones that will hold everything firm, I buy that and, I, and I'm good, okay? And then good workout shoes. Always invest in good workout shoes if you don't want to start giving yourself leg issues, especially when you're plus size. When you're plus size, you cannot you cannot manage your oh. <laughs> you cannot manage because remember <laughs> why your friends and your mates are, are are shaking 60 kg, 70 kg up and down, your own is 100 and something. So you have to invest in good workout shoes and in a good workout bra. Every other thing you can freestyle it. Or just go to Okrika and buy those things and buy them cheap because brand new is very expensive. Just go to Okrika, buy those things and you're good, I beg. And now the last one but not the least is makeup palettes, especially eyeshadow palettes, okay? I, in fact, just eyeshadow palettes basically, I don't even buy any other type of palettes like contour palettes, I don't even use to buy those ones, I buy single pieces like contour powder, contour stick, contour, um, um, what they call the name, concealer or, or whatever powder, I don't do contour palettes, okay? But you see eyeshadow palettes, <laughs> waste of time, waste of money. How many times do you do a blue and purple smoky eye with pink crease look? How many times do you do it? I'm talking about the average person right now. Some people are makeup lovers. It's, it's, for them, it's not just makeup. It's like, it's a toy. It's, it's a hobby, you know. It's not just doing makeup like the rest of us, okay? I'm not referring to those people. I'm talking about the regular, schmegular you and I that just do makeup because we want to go out and look good. How many times have you used purple, neon green, uh, yellow, all those colors? How many times? So for me, eh, there's no point buying all those palettes, all those 20-something shades, 20-something colors there's no point if you can just get one good neutral palette and maybe has one or two colors once it has your nudes it has one or two colors it has your shimmer it has your crease color and it has your what else again it inner crease outer crease color you are good okay so anyway, that's it. Those are the items I have either stopped buying, I'm no longer going to be buying, or moving forward, I'm going to reduce the rate at which I buy them, okay? Let me know in the comment section which ones are yours. Let me know if you can relate to anyone I called. If you yourself can relate to them, let me know in the comment section. But if you have other items that you absolutely can do without, let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.